Good evening, sisters and brothers, and um, welcome to this evening's evening prayer. Today's Wednesday evening. I trust that you are well this evening. And uh, the day turned out to be very nice today. Um, still a bit windy outside, but don't have to be shouting as I was last night. And um, not as rainy today. In fact, I don't think it rained at all today. Overcast, but no rain. So let's hope it remains like that <laughs> while I'm out here. Anyway, so let's begin our evening prayer as we draw this day to a close. <clears throat> o God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Matthew chapter 5. This is the Beatitudes. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the salt of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. <clears throat> that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. And our collect. Eternal Lord, our beginning and our end, bring us with the whole creation to your glory, hidden through past ages and made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, our psalm for this evening is Psalm 119. 119 and um, let's take this book Psalm 119 from verse 129 to 152 119 from 120 from, from 129 to 152 just a second Psalm 119, verse 129. Your statutes are wonderful, therefore I obey them. The unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant, longing for your commands. Turn to me and have mercy on me as you always do to those who love your name. Direct my footsteps according to your word. Let no sin rule over me. Redeem me from human oppression, that I may obey your precepts. Make your face shine upon your servant and teach me your decrees. Streams of tears flow from my eyes for your law is not obeyed. 
You are righteous, Lord, and your laws are right. The statutes you have laid down are righteous. They are fully trustworthy. My zeal wears, out, wears me out, for my enemies ignore your words. Your promises have been thoroughly tested, and your servant loves them. Though I am lowly and despised, I do not forget your precepts. Your righteousness is everlasting and your law is true. Trouble and distress have come upon me, but your commands give me delight. Your statutes are always righteous. Give me understanding that I may live. I call with all my heart. Answer me, Lord, and I will obey your decrees. I call out to you. Save me and I will keep your statutes. I rise before dawn and cry for help. I have put my hope in your word. My eyes stay open through the watches of the night that I may meditate on your promises. Hear my voice in accordance with your love. Preserve my life, Lord, according to your laws. Those who devise wicked schemes are near, but they are far from your law. Yet you are near, Lord, and all your commands are true. Long ago I learned from your statutes that you established them to last forever. Amen. We finish there for now. You know, I do love Psalm 119. It's such an amazing meditation, you could say, on the Word of God. Um, and just to take a few things here. So verse, verse 138. The statutes you have laid down are righteous. They are fully trustworthy. I mean, the psalmist is saying that God's word is righteous and fully trustworthy. We can trust the word of God. Sisters and brothers, we can trust this book. It's fully trustworthy because it's God's precepts. It's God's statutes. It's God's law. It's fully trustworthy. Uh, um, your promises, verse 140 have been thoroughly tested and your servant loves them. That is the, the, the psalmist, your servant, loves your statutes. Let me read um, one of Keller's meditation on, on the last section, using the word he calls it. These verses give a glimpse of a day a day in the life of a person of the word. He gets up before dawn to pray and hope in God's word, 147 verse. Late at night he meditates on his promises, verse 148. Verse 164 says that he praises God seven times a day for his word. Many monastic orders Follow this literally and have seven set daily times for prayer and reading. But since the number seven signifies completeness or totality, we learn that we should make the prayerful study of the word one of the top priorities of our time, something that is never squeezed out by other things. You know, sisters and brothers, we live in such busy times. You know, I, I, read, I read biographies of saints of long ago. And maybe it's because they didn't have as many distractions as we do today. Gadgets and this and that. But the, the, the Christians of old, sisters and brothers would spend hours meditating, reading, reflecting on the Word of God. 
today we can't even find 15 minutes to to to, to read God's word our lives are so full of things that squeeze out the word of God and Keller is making the point that the psalmist talks about getting up um, setting seven times a day for prayer and in the monastery the monks and the nuns they do this they they have seven prayers seven set prayer times throughout the day from midnight all the way back to midnight the whole day and and sisters and brothers we need to make time for the Word of God we need to set apart time you know Bible study is not many people don't even show up for Bible study uh, you know we've been doing a Bible study two Bible studies on zoom and I understand some people don't have zoom but those who do they don't show up for them because lives are too busy there are too many other things going on and those other things squeeze out the Word of God from our lives sisters and brothers we cannot grow in our faith without the food of God's Word and when we squeeze it out uh, with all sorts of other things we become stunted in our growth as Christians we become spiritual dwarfs spiritual toddlers we don't grow because we don't have time to spend reflecting reading meditating on the Word of God studying God's Word <clears throat> and so Keller makes the point maybe we we don't have seven times a day we don't live in a monastery fine but we need to make sure that the Word of God the study the prayerful study of the Word of God become a top priority in our lives and it's not squeezed out by more important things in our daily lives and the prayer Lord when I am done with this prayer I'm going to make a plan and take action to read your word more and more often help me help all of us so that our plans will be neither too unrealistic to work nor too unambitious to make a difference in our lives amen i have said sisters and brothers 15 minutes a day to read through the scriptures if we set aside 15 minutes in our busy day just to take up the word of god and read it you know tolelege take up and read it will make a difference in our lives sisters and brothers the word of god transform our lives you know i think it was john stott who said many years ago the word of god transform our lives when we when we get the drip 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 of that word into us every day you know like the water coming down off the roof and it's just dripping 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 in a spot and and that water dripping in that spot if it continues like that for days and weeks and months you come back to that spot a month later and there is a hole in the ground on the concrete where that water has been dripping and dripping and dripping and dripping when we take God's Word into our souls daily having that daily dripping of God's Word you'll be surprised how that transforms you into the likeness of Christ every day the drip 15 minutes a day no more if you are able just take the word and read it anyway moving on um, we are in Luke Luke chapter 20 <clears throat> Mm. 
Luke chapter 20, verses 1 to 8. Luke 20 from verse 1 to 8. One day, as Jesus was teaching the people in the temple courts and preaching the gospel, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, together with the elders, came up to him. Tell us, by what authority you are doing these things, they said. Who gave you this authority? Jesus replied, I will, ask, I will also ask you a question. <clears throat> Tell me, John's baptism, was it from heaven or from men? They discussed it among themselves and said, If we say from heaven, he will ask, Why didn't you believe him? But if we say from men, all the people will stone us because they are persuaded that John was a prophet. So they answered, We don't know where it was from. Jesus said, Neither will I tell you by what authority. I am doing these things. So here, Jesus' authority is questioned by the religious leaders. And what is it that they want to do? They want to trap Jesus. Of course, they, 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 want, they want him to explain himself. They want him to give an account for, for, for why justify himself to them. But Jesus is not about to justify himself to them. In fact, they don't deserve to, be, to have that truth because they will not use that truth about Jesus uh, in the right way. They will use it maliciously, wickedly uh, against him. So Jesus put to them a scenario. So Jesus said, well, if you tell me my question first, then I will tell you yours. John's baptism. Was it from God or was it, was it a human creation? Did John come up with it himself or did, or did God put him up to it? Now, of course, they didn't believe John was a prophet. But they dare not say that because as they reasoned among themselves, they were afraid of the people. Because they knew a lot of people followed John. And, and of course they didn't believe it was from God. Because they, as they reasoned, if they say it was from God, then they think Jesus would say, then why didn't you believe John? But they didn't believe John because they don't believe John's from God. So they, they take the political answer and say, we don't know. The political cop-out. Instead of actually taking a position, they take no position. And Jesus responded by saying, because you refuse to, to commit yourself to an answer, you do not deserve an answer from me. You do not deserve uh, to receive the truth about the authority that I have. So I'm not going to tell you that either. And the point that Jesus is making, sisters and brothers, is a, it's a very important point. Is that, you know, the, the questioning of Jesus' authority was not because they wanted to know more about Jesus. It's not because they wanted to, to, to know who this Jesus is so they can, so they can genuinely seek to put their faith in him. That is not the point. And Jesus knows their hearts. They are questioning Jesus because they want to use it against him as a sort of, as a, as a weapon against him. And Jesus will not give them the satisfaction of that. And, um, and you know, it, it, there's no difference, of course, today. No difference. Is that... Um, there are people who still use the information that we give them about the gospel as a weapon against us. 
they don't, they don't want to know truth. They don't want to learn truth. They want information, data, that they can use as weapons against God's people. And Jesus will not have it, and neither should we. That's it. Let's, uh, let's pray. Right, so we come again tonight and we bring before God our concerns and our, our burdens, as it were, our, our suffering, our cares, our concerns, our anxieties, our worries. There are many people who are worried because of the lifting of the restrictions we have been under this cloud for so long getting back to normal is like what is normal anymore what is normal and there are people who are scared there are people who are worried about what it will mean for the virus the virus is still with us it's not gone what will it mean for our lives when masks come off, social distancing no longer, we are singing again. Church is back to normal. What will all that mean? And so there's a lot of fear. Sisters and brothers, let me first say, Christians do not have fear. We do not live our lives in fear. The scriptures remind us that we are not to be afraid but rather to, end, to, to, to entrust our lives to the one who is the truth, the way, and the life. The, we are not to fear. We are not to live our lives in a, being afraid of what is going to happen tomorrow. We are to live our lives in faith, trusting that Jesus Christ, the Sovereign Lord, has all in control. And so we pray, we pray, oh God, we pray for those who are afraid, for those who are scared about the restrictions and the, the, the new normal that we are entering into and the, the lifting of restrictions and, and returning to normalcy again. Lord, take away the fear. But we pray, Lord, that you'll protect us all from this virus that's still amongst us. Even as we gather to worship at church, to sing, to enjoy a meal again together. Lord, we pray that you'll keep us all safe, we pray. Keep us safe as your people gathered for worship from coronavirus and any other form, any, anything else that may seek to creep in, any, any, uh, uh, any other malevolent um, virus that may seek to destroy us. Lord, protect us, we pray. Protect your people everywhere as we return. Um, to church in full uh, without restrictions singing again Lord watch over us we pray and all those Lord who are afraid take away the fear strengthen our faith so that Lord we will live by faith and not by sight Lord in your mercy hear our prayer so we continue to remember those that are on our prayer list. We continue to ask God's mercy on them. We think of Jean and Walter, who I saw uh, yesterday, Monday, Tuesday, one day. <laughs> I think it was yesterday. And um, they look really well. And I give God thanks for Jean and, and Walter. And... Um, and for the strength that they have, physical strength, not just an emotional. But we pray, we pray for that spiritual strength as well. 
we we ask for their well-being we ask god to to protect them and guide them and keep them safe in the care home and pray for monica as well god will watch over them and provide caring carers to look after them in their in, in their time of need we remember others on our list we think of auntie janie and um tavern his wife selima and his mom selvi we also remember mrs cos mrs core and her brother sami in india mrs score has moved to birmingham we pray for her we pray that she will find a good church there where she can worship we pray we continue to pray for our sister jane lindsay and her dad andrew and we also remember maxine and paul and we pray for paul wherever he may be at this day remember also our sister dolly remember veronica and her brother arthur and chester as well doreen we think of thelma we ask god's blessing on them we ask god's grace and avril as well and sebastian and reverend david hoyt and her uh, and, and his wife bernadette lord in your mercy hear our prayer and so let's say a night prayer before we finish tonight guide us waking O lord and guard us sleeping that awake we may watch with christ and asleep we may rest in peace into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you.
remain with you and with all you love tonight, sisters and brothers, and forever. Amen. Have a blessed night, one and all.